All right. Um, I want to move on to the second blog post. I'm just scanning the chat for, uh, you know, oh, the, the usual you're on bashing over Trump. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, it's pretty funny. The second uh, blog post that uh, Armin Hoffman put up, I thought was really good, was, this is the title, this is the title. Why hard work is so important and still underrated. And the post is really to combat a trend that seems to be out there among people, among, in Twitter, self-help manuals, all kinds of stuff that you can have your cake and eat it. You can achieve greatness in everything that you do. Don't work too hard. There's an important balance to be found in life. And on is very clear. If you want to be good at something, now, if you want to be great at something, anything you want to be great at, you're going to have to work really, really, really hard. Lots of hours. Not just hours, thoughtful hours. More than that. If you want to be great at something, you have to obsess about it. You have to be obsessed by that thing. To be one of the best in the world at anything, at something, you have to work hard. So if you aspire to greatness in whatever you do, and I wouldn't say best in the world because that's too comparing to other people, if you want to be the best that you can be at something, then you have to work hard at it. You have to obsess about it. You cannot be great at something, Owen writes, and I agree with him, unless you're obsessed with it. He says you need to be thinking about it all the time. And that obsession may, may consume you, and it might not be healthy for you. But that's the difference between being great and just being good. And I think he's absolutely right. If you want to change the world, you're not going to do it working 40 hour weeks. And by the way, he talks about the fact that nobody actually works 40 hour weeks. 40 hour a week is very rare. Think about how many hours you actually work. You're actually productive. You actually do not moving around emails, emptying your trash, playing around, checking out, checking out the latest scores, but actually working. He says very few people, and I agree, very few people who work 40 hours actually get 40 hours work done. To get 40 hours work done, you often have to work 60 hours, 80 hours. There are a few incredibly productive, focused, energetic people who can get 40 hours work done in 40 hours. But that's a minority. Most of us have to take a lot longer to get that work done. So if you want to be great at something, if you want to be really good, if you want to make a lot of money, not every field allows you to make a lot of money, but if you want to make a lot of money and you're in the right field, you better work hard. And 40 hours is not going to cut it Take an example. And this, this is what's amazes to me, because there is this trend against hard work, against focus, against obsession, against really, really, really focusing on career. And yet, we all understand that athletes have to do it. That athletes have to work unbelievably hard to just play one game. That it's constant. That it's in-season and off-season. They work when... They're not playing the game. They're thinking about what to eat, how many hours to sleep, what they can and cannot do. Constantly, all integrated about one purpose, playing the game, being the best that they can be. Think about that. They rehab themselves when they get injured, how much effort they put into that. I mean, there's the 10,000-hour rule. I don't know if it's a true rule or not, but there's the 10,000-hour rule that, uh, that was popularized 
by Malcolm Gladwell, that to get great at anything, you have to do it. To master anything, you have to do it. 10,000 hours of practice. But I suspect many of these do much more than 10,000 hours. And it's not just a dumb 10,000 hours. It's a real 10,000 hours. Now, this context is a good opportunity to mention the tragic passing of, of Kobe Bryant this last week. Now, I am a Celtics fan, so I despise the Lakers. But Kobe was an amazing player, one of the great players of all time. But Kobe did not become an amazing player accidentally. Luck, yes, he had some physical talents, physical skills, physical athletic build. But Kobe worked it and worked it and worked it. I mentioned Neil Peart when he passed away. Give me a break. The, the chat again always, you know, goes crazy no matter what I'm talking about. So, Kobe, I mean, all of these players, they practiced unbelievable, unbelievably. I mean, there's a story that Owen Hoffman cites in this blog post. It says uh, Kobe Bryant was training with the American Olympic basketball team in 2012. I mean, this is Olympic basketball. Nobody really cares. Well, but Toby did because he wanted to be great, wanted always to be great. A trainer met Brian in Las Vegas and offered to help him whenever he needed. He needed it. Brian ended up calling this trainer at 4 a.m. in the morning to do a conditioning stint. After the workout, the trainer went back to bed to get some sleep before an 11 a.m. scrimmage with the full team. When the trainer returned to the court, he asked Bryant how long he had worked out for. Bryant told him he hadn't left the facility. He had wanted to hit 800 shots and had just finished. Bryant had shown up seven hours early for a scrimmage game. That's how you become great. You want to be great at what you do? Then that's what you have to do. So, work hard, focus, choose your values, I've talked about this in the past, choose your values, create a hierarchy, decide which is the best, because one of the other points that Owen makes is you can't be great at everything. You can't be great at everything. So pick a few things you want to be great at. Pick a few areas you really care about. Pick the things that are most valuable to you and be great at that. You have to choose. You have to create hierarchies. People talk about sacrifice. Sacrifice something for others. No, you have to create hierarchies and, 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 and uh, um, create, figure out what you're, what's more important to you and what's less important to you. I've still got these things on. In whatever you do, if you look at a, a, in every field, great scientists, great musicians, great athletes, great business leaders, every single one of them worked unbelievably hard at what they did. If you're going to be great, you get a, get a work. Get a work. And working hard does not mean working stupid. It means... Figure out the best way to work. Figure out the smartest way to work. If you're a basketball player, figure out the best way to condition yourself. Figure out how many shots you have to make in order to get better at shooting. Figure out what you need to do to make your work as effective as possible to make you great. And you have to give up stuff to do that. If you're going to be great at your career, you're going to spend less time with your kids. If you're going to be great with your kids, you're going to spend less time with your friends. If you're going to be great with friendship, you're going to spend less time doing something else. You cannot be great at everything. You have to prioritize. You have to prioritize. Don't buy into the stupid Twitter memes of you can have your cake and eat it too or you don't need to sacrifice. Sacrifice not in the sense of 
moral sacrifice, but in the sense of giving up something for something else, you don't, don't need a sacrifice to achieve success. It's all BS. You have to work unbelievably hard. You can't have everything. You have to give up some things, sleep in many cases. And you have to figure out what's most important to you and go out and do it. And don't pretend, don't lie to yourself. Oh, I can do it all. Because you can't. So figure out what you want to do. Take control over your own life. You determine. You determine. Where to spend your time. Where to spend your effort. Where to spend your thinking. This is a saying that he quotes, which is pretty good. You, you can have anything you want, but not everything you want, which I think reflects that. I think reflects that. All right. Uh, he says, there, you know, in the end of the day, there are only three ways of getting, of being great at something. Uh, where are they? Three ways, three ways. Lucky? <laughs> you have to be extraordinarily lucky. And I include, you know, extraordinarily lucky. And I, I think that's really, really, really rare. Being born with extraordinary gift that no one else has, again, that's lucky, and that's really, 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 really rare. Or working insane hours. Now, again, working insane hours in the right way, but working in safe hours. So if you want to live a great life, you got to find the thing you want to be great at. And focus on that. Strive for that. Create an explicit hierarchy of values and go for it. One of the things I like about Arn Hoffman is, I don't know, I, my guess is he's been inspired by Ayn Rand, but I don't know it. But he, this is like his closing, one of, uh, almost his closing paragraph in this uh, podcast, in this blog. He says, we enjoy all the pleasures of modern day life. Because someone worked hard to create them. If only people understood that. If only people recognized it. Dreamers who put their dreams into action have given us medical breakthroughs, space explo exploration, and the rule of law. So even in politics. Hard work is a prerequisite for changing the world. There's no substitute for it. And despite what some may say, it's still underrated. If you work hard with the right people on the right product, you can change your life and the lives of millions of others. Now, that's, that's inspiring. So, again, I recommend Aaron Hoffman, A-U-R-E-N, Hoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N's blog called summation.net. Um, he has some really interesting stuff. Again, if you're interested in Silicon Valley, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're interested in technology, he's one of the most important thinkers out there on issues around entrepreneurship and technology. Using the Super Chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com you're on Brooks show and um and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going i'm not sure when the next